was reminded not too long ago of just how dangerous even a Quinton catheter insertion can be. I uh, went to go do a Quinton catheter bedside. I was working with an NP, he was trying to train her. So we were doing the case together. I was doing it in the groin. Basically got access to the vein, started to pass this J wire, you know, what was in the kit, and the wire just wasn't going smoothly. And immediately I was sort of paralyzed, you know. If in, a, if in the IR suite, I would have immediately looked under x-ray, I would have considered using a different wire, I would have maybe considered a venogram, but I had none of those things. I was basically bedside with whatever's in this kit, which wasn't a big fan of the kit, but the kit was there. Uh, I was basically there with an ultrasound and this wire, and it wouldn't go. And I tried a few different times and it just didn't go. And I realized that uh, if I didn't have, I knew at that time I had to stop, but if I was really truly desperate to get that catheter in, I might have just forced the wire. I might have considered just forcing the catheter in. If I was truly, truly desperate, and if this was life-saving, I didn't know what I was doing, if I hadn't placed thousands of Quinton catheters as an IR tending and fellow, I would have maybe done that and maybe caused serious harm to the patient, right? Maybe dilated, you know, through the vein and caused a venous uh, injury, maybe caused an arterial injury, maybe injured, God knows what. Um, and I'm glad that we, first of all, have this skill set, but we know what's right and wrong, right? We know what a normal wire passage is and what is not. And I'm really glad that we have, uh, you know, imaging guidance. We have, we have that extra, we have that fluoroscope if we're doing it in the IR suite, and we can know what's going on. Um, at that moment, I realized just how dangerous this bedside Quinton could be. And I basically gave up the procedure, and the procedure was deferred until it could be done safely in the angio suite. Just goes to show you, this is a low work RVU procedure, has a lot of value, can cause a lot of harm, can, can create a lot of good in the right setting, but it can also create a lot of harm. We shouldn't give this stuff up. Um, just because it has a low value doesn't mean that it is of low value. And increasingly, we're seeing that someone else is going to step up and support the true value of that procedure and they realize what's at stake that if they do not, if they do not support the true value of that procedure, you can see what kind of risk you're adding to the healthcare system, the kind of stuff that you're trying to get rid of. Struggle on